Hello, welcome to the festival of Bali, the Bali Spirit Festival. And today we are here with you. Yes. To, uh, <laughs> for some very important and funny questions. Okay. Um, so your subject uh, is a soul realization. That's right. And um, is it possible to have um, the definition of soul and then definition of realization okay. to, to see uh, what you do and how okay. it works? Okay, all right. Uh, first of all, let me, I'll introduce myself yes. back to the people. My name is uh, Panda Chi. Uh, and I teach soul realization through movement. Okay, so we'll look at the word soul. And the word soul, uh, for me, is like spirit, you could say. Uh, the, what gives you the, um, how do I say, the, the life behind your life. The essence of the light that shines through your eyes, that motivates you to do things or to feel the light you could say to interpret the light so uh, and the realization is the to realize what that is to understand and to know and to experience what that is okay so mainly the soul you cannot see because it is transparent like air you cannot see the air and you cannot see spirit but you can feel spirit and sometimes people have experiences where they feel spirit like for instance a ghost is a spirit so sometimes you can feel ghosts some people feel ghosts or they feel somebody sitting next to them and nobody's there so that you could say is like spirit now the soul is like the essence of the spirit you could say okay now the realization of this helps you go beyond your definition of what your mind is uh, telling you. Okay, because the mind can usually is concentrating on forms. And as I said before, soul is invisible, so there is no form there, but you can have an experience of it. And the realization to realize that you are not your body and you are not your form, and you are not your mind. So that means something that transcends those things, which actually, when you experience that, it gives you a feeling of joy and happiness, which those qualities are eternal. So they go on forever, where your body and your mind only last for a certain amount of time, and then they disappear. So the Buddha, or Christ, or any realized person in, in our history, was able to realize their soul. Yeah. Yeah. I use movement to help uh, realize that. Okay, now the thing is, movement, again, is with the body, or using our physical uh, capability. But what I speak about is nothing to do with the body or the mind. Okay, so it's formless, but that is encompassed in all things moving and everything that there is spirit is moving through it so the essence what you could say the essence of soul is everywhere actually but we don't have the capability to understand it because we're so limited because of our mind limits our expression of it and our body limits the expression of it so many times we get trapped into the mind and we get trapped into the body which is quite a limitation. Only when we transcend those two things uh, that uh, we start to have a recognition of it. Okay, now I'll give an example so everybody can understand what I'm talking about. So say when you're extremely happy, then you experience not your ego, because your ego is not there. You're not thinking, but you're experiencing something. And that's a, sort of like a freedom that you're experiencing. And, and uh, Expression of the freedom is happiness. Now, here's another one. If you take a baby and you throw it up in the air, you'll notice the baby goes, ha, 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 and it laughs when it's floating in nothingness. Hmm. And that's what I'm talking about. This nothingness, no form, is actually where the freedom lies and also the joy and the happiness. When now, when we go into the mind, we start attaching the mind to objects and to things. And that brings us into a form again 
which actually stops you from connecting to the formless. Yeah, so I use like body movements to go to transport us into a formless state. Uh, that's again now I'm speaking and everything I'm speaking is through mind. But so you need to have a physical experience of what I'm speaking about to start to understand it. So this is real knowing. Right now we're in a time where we have Google knowing. So that means whatever you want to know, you can just Google it and it pleases your mind, the information you get. But that's not real knowing. Real knowing bypasses your mind. So everybody's had this feeling too. All of a mm. sudden you just know something and mm. you can't explain why you know, but you know. Mm. And there's no thought process there when that happens. And I have a question. Is the consciousness also the same for you? Would, uh, Is it a synonym? Consciousness? Yes. And soul? Is there any difference or is it the same? Well, you could say, you know, you could say like consciousness is the background. Mm -hmm. Everything is consciousness. Okay. Your soul is also consciousness. Ah, you're talking about human soul. Yeah. Or, and soul of anything. The soul of the tree. Mm. Yeah. The soul of the sky. The soul of the sun. Everything has a soul mm. or an essence, you could say. The essence of you. The essence of the tree, you could say, is the soul. So the, the essence, the soul is an essence for you. You know, this is the now. This is the tricky part because you know, mm. if I say it's this, mm. then I put into a form. Yes, of course. Okay. Yeah. So I understand, understand the word God mm. and and these things that I speak about. They're formless. Mm. Okay. Right. Mm. So when I speak about soul, okay, I put it in the form, but mm. I can't speak about something if it has no form it, because nobody will understand. <laughs> it's beyond words. Yeah. So the only <laughs> thing, like I told you, is mm. you have to experience. Mm. So when you experience that. Mm -hmm you'll have a very hard time to explain to people what it is. Exactly. Because it's not a form. Yet. Okay. Yeah. But what about creating new forms and creating new worlds to talk about what There's is many. not existing yet? There's many. And, and they're only variations of nothing. Hmm. Okay? Because hmm. that's what we're, <laughs> we're talking about something that is actually nothing. Hmm. Emptiness. Nothing. Space. Okay, I can call space anything, but it's not the space. It's nothing, but at the same time it is something this is the tricky part <laughs> it's nothing but at the same time it holds everything exactly <laughs> yeah so that's why it's difficult to speak about this yeah i can point to it yeah but the thing is you need to experience it yeah. and as with we can feel it yeah so that's what happened with my teacher your teacher yeah i had a teacher who is your teacher my teacher is a disciple of ramana maharishi ah nice yeah and his name was punjaji or papaji so I sat with Papaji on and off for three years. And I also had other teachers too that gave me that experience of, I, I call it like no mind. Mm. So uh, uh, with your workshop, yes. uh, because you're going to do one uh, yes. very soon, uh, yes. it's interesting to talk about it. So if some people yes. want to go. Yes. Uh, what are you going to do in this workshop? Okay. And uh, where, where is it and when? Okay, the, the workshop I'm going to do, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be in, I think about 10 or 11 days. It starts on the 16th of April and it goes to the 23rd of April. And it's on Gili Air, which is a small island off of Lombok. It's Lombok. And uh, there's no cars that go on that island. You can walk around the island like a, in an hour and a half. So, and there I will give uh, more or less the essence of my work, which is like fourfold, the four parts to it. There's purification exercises because if you want to make contact to uh, something more higher and more divine, you have to purify yourself so you can take in the energy to make the connection. And then there is um, energization exercises, uh, Qigong exercises, basically that expands your system to take more cosmic energy in, mm. so you can have a better um, uh, uh, intake of cosmic energy because that's another thing if you want to experience God or whatever you want to call that it's very big mm. and you know if your system is not ready it's like mm. a light bulb mm. you've got a 40 watt light bulb but you're getting thousand watts or exactly. ten thousand watts you cannot hold it mm. so you have to uh, boost your system up and the qigong helps you do that to open your circuits to take in more energy yeah and then there is some tai chi i teach some tai chi so you can understand what is uh, non-doing Non-doing does not mean that you don't do anything, but movements arise from non-ego. 
so egoless movement. And also Tai Chi is very good at integrating body, mind and spirit. Those three aspects, because most people, they're not aligned. And this is our biggest problem. So what I mean by that is like what I think is not what I'm speaking. And what I'm speaking is not what I'm acting, even though I might mean it. So that means what I'm thinking, something else is coming different out of my mouth. And what I'm saying, my body is not doing it. So this is like a fragmentation. And this is where most people are at. They're fragmented. I did an exercise in class with you and I said, okay, now imagine that you're having a very nice time and you're smiling and you're enjoying yourself. And when I looked at the class, even though I knew that they were all thinking that, I saw them, they're all like that. <laughs> you know. And then I said, okay, now let's connect the two. So the external is following the internal. Mm. So this is uh, the main thing is that why we're not experiencing uh, what I call divinity which that's where we come from, mm. is because we're not in alignment with it, mm. you know. So first we have to align ourselves and then the energy can uh, stream mm. easier. So that's what the Tai Chi helps me do, mm. to do that, to show people how they can get more into alignment. And then the last thing I teach, which I didn't teach here at all, are the sacred exercises. I have these sacred chakra exercises, which is basically the bhakti uh, part of my program and that is the devotional aspect. So in any type of uh, self-realization work, there should be three parts. And the three parts, which is the same as the three paths, which is yoga, yani, and bhakti, which is physical, mental, and spiritual. Okay, these three is like the Holy Trinity, which I spoke about. Holy Trinity is Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Father represents the consciousness supreme consciousness the Sun is the children of the consciousness the people yeah which is the physical aspect and Holy Ghost is your spirit so the spirit helps us go back to the consciousness yeah, to transcend the physical aspect and the mental aspects to go back into the super consciousness so all these three must be touched upon and when that happens then you have transformation then you have something that touches your soul and that you can start to experience something from that level. And I have a question. Why all your exercise is helping us to go to alignment? alignment? Yeah. Why? How it works? Okay. One, as I said before, all the exercises we're doing, they're based on natural movement. Yes, but why is the natural movement is yeah. uh, creating this, uh, this marriage with uh, what we think? Because in your we... essence, you are consciousness, you are soul, yeah. you are nature, right? But because... Well, you misuse your mind and you misuse your body that you don't get to experience that. What you experience is your ego because your ego is controlling your movement. Your ego is controlling okay. your mind. Yeah, so when we do mm. something that goes, that uses only natural things, mm. it goes back to nature. So this is consciousness of the body finally, which is, is going to connect consciousness in Yes, general. your body has a consciousness of its own. Mm. Yeah, its own consciousness actually. And, and that's what I, I asked you to do in the class. I asked you to focus, put your consciousness into the consciousness of your body. Okay, so put the consciousness into your shoulders. Your shoulder has consciousness. If you, every part of your body has consciousness. If you don't believe me, all you do is you take your finger and you pinch yourself. And if it hurts, then you know you got consciousness there. So you need to link it up. So the mind is linking up with the body. So mm. that's slowly bringing it into alignment. Mm. Yeah. And now, the thing, the, 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 the most important part is the realization of spirit or soul. This is space and silence. Is it space or is it void? Same. Space, ah, void. It's a little bit different. But void, space, it, emptiness. Okay, emptiness, emptiness. Yeah, because, um, you know, every time because I... Because space is not empty, it's a detail, but uh, this is why I prefer void, but I wanted to ask. <laughs> okay, you know, Everything that we're talking now is words. Yes, words. This is a problem. Words have definition, yeah, mm. yeah, which is created by mind. Mm. Okay, so if I say something, mm. right away the mind is going to take it and it's going to hang on to it and mm. put it into a place. So you know, when I say space, you say void. Well, space is not void, or <laughs> void is not space, and then already begins the <laughs> ego going like this. Okay, so. Best thing I could think, nothingness, <laughs> emptiness, something like beyond a form. Okay. 
<laughs> so okay so this 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 to have this be conscious of this what that is so in class when I'm with everybody I'm very conscious of what that is I'm experiencing it actually and slowly what happens because everything actually happens through consciousness so I talk to you I'm talking to you with my consciousness depending on where my consciousness is you'll start to pick up on that vibration subconsciously yeah so in class subconsciously what happens is people start to feel this emptiness they start to slowly come out of their mind mm -hmm. and I help that by okay by asking your mind to go to some place to focus so that it's not wandering around and then after a while it slowly disappears I don't know did you feel that yeah, yeah okay so that goes uh, in degrees okay so like when I was with my teacher he, he was he was Yanni he was a, a wisdom master and uh, he spoke and he was really clear and sharp and everything but when I when I sat with him all of a sudden my mind went empty <laughs> I didn't hear anything he said that's right exactly same he was a disciple of him yeah. so that's what happened to me and and I thought I didn't hear a word but it didn't matter because that was his teaching Hmm. actually hmm. so the teaching was a presence presence hmm. and that's my teaching too it's presence so when people are with me slowly their mind fades away and their spirit arises or their being shines forth mm -hmm. and then you start experiencing that and that's quite something to, for people to start feeling and then I have people coming to me for many years so they come because you know the exercises I teach, they sort of more or less stay the same, but they don't come for the exercises. They come because they get to experience their being. And the more they come, the deeper and wider the space becomes, the emptiness becomes bigger and wider. And the more space and emptiness you get, the more happy you are. I have a question. Do you know why the presence of a master is helping us yeah. to feel yeah. that? Yeah. Uh, yes, it, I told you, it's going through consciousness. So when the teacher or, and it can be also the nature too. Mm. I mean, Ramana, he went and sat with the mountain and the mountain was his guru, made him be quiet. So my teacher used to say to me, he used to say, Papa, used to say, look, you want to know if somebody's real or not? You just go there and sit with them. And if they make <laughs> you quiet, stay there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Because there's nothing more honest than silence. When you take everything away, the silence will still be there. That's what's eternal. That's what's not changing. Everything is pasted on top of it. Mm. So if you find a teacher that brings you to the silence, stay there and drink as much as possible so you don't forget. That was what the silence. happened to me. Mm. Yeah. So it becomes physical. Mm. So in class, I'm physically feeling this silence or this space whatever you want to call it and because of that I know that people can start to experience it too. Mm. it doesn't really matter so much about the things that I'm doing I'm not concerned about that mm. I'm more concerned about the people and that's why I asked that they had, who, who felt this or who experienced that and mm. a lot of people put up their hand mm. so I'm very happy mm. that people start to taste that mm. they don't quite understand it yet and that's why you need to come back so you can start to realize what that is mm -hmm. Because, you know, we experience it every day, hmm. fleetingly, in moments. Hmm. But we don't ever realize it because we don't get to, to taste it long enough. Is it uh, also the reason why when we do Qigong and Tai Chi, we have to be in the presence? And maybe this is why we get the silence. That depends on the teacher. So Tai Chi is a transmission, mm -hmm. Qigong is a transmission. Transmission means basically that it's not a technique. It's coming from essence. So if somebody uh, teaches you uh, Qi Kung, that's an energy transference. If the person that's teaching you, he doesn't have the energy, he doesn't feel Qi, well, you're not going to feel Qi. Mm. But if he feels Qi and he's really aware, like when I move my arms mm. in the air, I feel my arms expanding, I feel the energy moving. And I know then people are going to feel it. The people that are open and sensitive, they start to feel it too. Mm. They start to feel. I ask people to feel their third eye open. I ask them to feel their crown. All these things that happen in class that I ask people to do is because I personally am experiencing it. 
And then, okay, when I personally experience it, I feel it opening. Mm. I say, okay, now everybody concentrate there mm. and see if you can feel it too. Mm. So you go, technically, you go inside you where you have your consciousness, third eyes or anything, and then people connect you and feel them, that inside them also. Yeah, it's like the consciousness is uh, available okay. for whatever feeling or for whatever vibration that, that mm. the teacher is experiencing. If he's consciously aware. Mm. I mean, I'm consciously aware mm. of how things are working. Mm -hmm. So I say, okay, now concentrate on that or mm. feel this. Mm. Yeah. And because it is actually in real time happening. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you're really present and you're sensitive, you start to feel mm. it. Yeah. So that's what the teacher is good for. If so, he's mm. consciously aware of the consciousness. Like my teacher, he was consciously aware of that. What I don't know what you want to call it, God, uh, mm. emptiness, uh, void, yes. or whatever. When I sat with him, I became conscious of that. Mm. Too. Thanks to the teacher. Thanks to the teacher, yes. If he was not there, mm. he was not conscious of it, where there's where's that consciousness going to mm. come from? Exactly. Yeah. It's, like so, a, it's like the teacher is a, a point of the consciousness, which is aware of himself. That's right. And uh, that's right. Is it is he living your master? He's not alive anymore. Okay. But I he was living okay. when I was. But you can also I've also had other teachers, and they were not alive, but they appeared to me, yeah, in astral form. Okay. Okay. So that's also possible because consciousness doesn't depend of on a body. Of course. Yeah. And do not. Yeah. yeah. So and so this is like uh, that's why many people see, for instance, that uh, they see Maria, apparition of uh, the Mother Mary. I, I saw apparition of the Mother Mary. She, she came to me too, and and I never went to church or anything. So I was very surprised when that happened to me. I thought, well, why, why is she here? Uh, so, but I'm very blessed to understand that you know these people like Jesus or Mary, these people were transcendent beings, yes. and they were not a religion. This is what people did to them after they took them and they put them in an institution or they put them in a religion mm -hmm. and then they made all these rules about them which has got nothing to do with the real transmission of course yeah but it's easy to get trapped in the propaganda or in the mm. in the the etiquette of religions so what advice can you can you give to not get trapped in anything uh, i i like to to um, to how do i say don't believe in anything i know that sounds strange but Think about it like this, you know, like I tell you, believe like believe in Santa Claus, okay? So you have to believe then that there's this man in a red suit and he goes around, flies around with his reindeer and he puts presents in your chimney and you get them at Christmas. This is the, the myth of Santa Claus or one myth of Santa Claus. But you know, that means you have to believe in something that's not real. Yeah, because to believe, to have belief is you, you you have to sort of convince yourself that something's happening but it's not real <laughs> so whatever you believe is not real so why do you want to believe in things that are not real just have the experience of something and then and then that is real instead of an idea all ideas and concepts come from your mind they're created they're not real they're illusions believe in something that you can see and you can touch and you can feel are you saying that the only reality is experience? This only true reality is now hmm. that I'm talking to you. Hmm. And another reality is like, okay, I'm thinking about what's in the future. Hmm. Like, what is it going to be like? Or in the past, what happened to me? But it's not real because hmm. those things have already happened or not have happened. Hmm. So I'm wasting my time actually. Hmm. Because whatever you think is going to happen, it's never like what really happens. Right? So you're wasting your time. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I learned. I, st I learned stop wasting my time with things that are not real because it doesn't help me anywhere, you know. And then when you start doing that, then when they don't happen, then you get really disappointed, you know, because you think, oh, yeah, but that should have happened. No, that's just your ego again, wanting something, a certain thing, but it's not true. So you get rid of that whole thing, which saves you lots and lots of energy. Which makes you quiet again. Because in actual fact, there's nothing going on. Only the creation of what your mind is making. I have a, um, 
A question for you, a uh, silly question is who are you? I don't know, who are you? <laughs> what is your answer? Who are you? Yeah, who are you? Yeah, who are you? <laughs> your answer is who are you? Well, who am I? Yeah. Who are you? Who are we? I know who am I. The question is who are you? Yeah. yeah. Well, my question what, what, is... What is your answer for this question? Who am I? I am Because you. Because many people are... are I am this. you. Yeah. And you are me. Yeah. And I am the tree. And I am the sky. I am the grass. I am everything. When my mind is not there. When my mind is there, it's me. I. When my mind is not there, I belong to everything. And I'm none of them. But I'm in all of them. Hi. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much for this interview. It was very nice. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.